Hello and welcome to DitoCast episode 581, recorded live on Sunday, November 24th. I'm your host, Patrick. Uh, with me this week, we have from DDO Players News, Draculetta. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, nice Sunday afternoon. Uh, Pre-D&D night, a uh, little recording here. Should be a lot of fun. Um, post-football, we got to watch both of our football teams. Uh, we're talking about the pro Some show. We're better than others. <laughs> I have had a much <laughs> better Sunday ahead. morning of football than, <laughs> than Dracula has had so far today. Yeah. Chats, man. Ouch. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, not to belabor a dead horse, uh, we'll talk about other horsies. Hey, there's mounts in the game. Cool. Uh, this week's screenshot, <laughs> shockingly, features a mount. Uh, and is keep on the borderlands. Uh, I'm assuming this is the wilderness area. I still haven't actually made it out there. Um, Eros takes a trip with his new partner in the 441st screenshot of the week. Thanks, Eros, for sending us this week's screenshot. Uh, I have to say, I'm mildly disappointed here. I mean, this is a great screenshot. Don't get me wrong. Well done on the screenshot. The unicorn screenshot. Like, did you not? Did they not submit this screenshot? Have you seen the unicorn screenshot? I have not forums? seen the you know I will have to go on the forums and look at that. Uh so someone posted a a uh it was a I think they even said like fake news in the title. <laughs> nice. Um, but it was like they they had this shot of the horse rearing up uh and their sword was just absolutely perfectly placed to make it look like a unicorn. Like a unicorn. Okay, I'll have to look at that. No, it I mean it was phenomenally Ooh. well done. Uh, I'm assuming that it was kind of a, a an accident, oh, or they must have spent just an obscene amount of time to get that shot. Uh, but it was really good, anyway. But this, you know, this screenshot is is also very good. I, I'm just gonna hazard a guess that, uh, man, if you can uh, utilize uh, mounts in your screenshotting for a little while, you're probably a shoe in. Granted. There's still, it's not like there's a lot of um, screenshots of the week. Man, seriously, people, like, do a little plug for, for Jerry here. You know, send in screenshots for the screenshot of the week. You get 500 points if you are selected. Uh, and they do not have an overabundance of <laughs> screenshots of the week. I mean, I think he, on average, has like three or four maybe to choose from. So it's not like he's got a bunch to choose. They've got a bunch to choose from. I don't think it's just him that, that chooses it, but uh, there's, you know, you've got a pretty good shot. If you send in a decent screenshot uh, and you, you hit the, you know, look for things that are timely, like new content uh, is a really good way to go. Um, I, I submitted one during the Hardcore League because uh, we killed Vela. And you know that was just kind of a shoe in because like hey there's twelve people we we killed Vela uh, on Hardcore League you know of course that's gonna be uh, a popular or an easy shoe in right so th- those are some uh, some tricks there to to get an easy an easy win as it were easy five hundred points uh, here is. Uh, and like totally mess up and hey live TV everyone here's this the screenshot of the uh, the unicorn. Okay, that is amazing. Yeah, so there you go. That's a uh, uh, and the title does actually fake screenshot unicorns best thing ever question mark. <laughs> it's the it's the thread. Um, That's great. Yeah, it was uh, and there were a few people that uh uh. That that kind of got caught off guard. Um, although, Somehow I missed that thread. Yeah, it's it's a good one. It was a uh, a good uh, nice little screenshot there. Uh, anyways, we like to talk about Dungeons Dragons online nearly every weekend. You can catch us through Twitch, YouTube, the Dido forums, iTunes, uh, or from our website DidoCast dot com. DidoCast is hosted by Cyber Ears. Um, actually, take a quick producer's note uh, moment here. Um, I don't really know what's going on exactly. Uh, there's been some trouble with uh, loading uh, the podcast up on Cyber Ears. Uh, for some reason, uh, it'll be on there, and 
I, I've had people e- uh, someone email me a couple times say, hey, it's not working on uh, iTunes, uh, and I check myself and it's not working. I do nothing, and it fixes itself in a day or two. Uh, this last week I re-uploaded it. I'm assuming it's working because no one told me it's not working. Um, but if you see a re-upload, that's kind of why. I, I literally have changed nothing in what I'm doing. I, I don't know what the difference is. Um I don't know if there's a coding thing or, or what, but uh, that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, let's see. Shows are usually available within a few days of recording. Uh, the next show will probably be this Saturday. Uh, you can say updated by following us on our social media pages or our website, docast.com with our calendar. Uh, on the podcast this week, uh, we've got part two of our uh, post-mortem discussion uh, that we did with Samus and Shrimp Tom. Uh, so you'll be able to catch that uh, if you're listening to this live. Of course, you, we already did that last week. Uh, but you can go back and watch that, or you can just wait for the show to come out uh, and be produced and stuff. Uh, yeah, and all that kind of fun stuff. And, you know, we got the, the usual stuff. Uh, hey, let's jump into to game news. Uh, there's not a ton of news this week. Um, you're welcome. It'll be a shorter show. But, you know, Drac and I, I think we can fill some time here uh, just kind of talking about stuff, right? Probably should not be a problem, sir. <laughs> If we had Jerry here, man, we could turn this into a three-hour show. No problem. <laughs> we could. That's right. Uh, anyways, uh, game news this week. Uh, we've got uh, Flimsy Nerf's quests. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Flimsy posted a, a a thread here uh, titled "Nerfing Content into the Ground." Uh, this is what he said: "Hey, folks, we've been looking at interesting data about player deaths in the hardcore server. There are a few quests that spike above and beyond the difficulty curve at their intended level." By way of example, stopping the Sahagin is one of the deadliest quests in the game. Uh, it is being nerfed as we speak. Uh, if you're wondering which quest this is, uh, this is the one that a whole lot of people died to the ice trap in the end. And uh, he says, I should know because I made it and also died while explaining how it works to my wife and friends on a rogue while jumping up and down in front of it. Oops. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, the quest when you go out in Korthos Island. It's just down in the water right to the left. It uh, used to be the low road, uh, if you can remember way back in the day, before Corthos Island was a thing. Uh, we've been looking, uh, sorry, <laughs> to disambiguate, uh, nerfing in this case means making the quest easier, not harder. Uh, while we are addressing obvious concerns, and I personally take the nerf back to some of these, we may overlook some of the least popular quests due to their data being less obvious, as in not a lot of people play them uh, so that they don't get a big spike in deaths. Uh, please use this thread to point out problematic quests in areas within them that are more difficult and annoying than the rest of the similar quests in the same level range. He will appreciate any screenshots and lo- uh, location strings of problematic areas. If you're wondering how you do that, slash LOC. I'll give you your location, which gives you this nice long string of numbers and letters, which um, I'm sure means something to somebody because it means nothing to me. Uh, it, you could literally give me random letters and numbers, and I wouldn't know the difference. Uh, but it does make it allows you to deliver swift nerf justice to the offenders. Uh, the point here is not to make the game a cakewalk, but to smooth out the difficulty curve from quest to quest. I'm not touching most quests, just the outliers, the ones that go out of their way to kill or annoy you. Bring out your pet peeves. Uh, yeah, so Stephen Zahagen was a good one. Um, he did kind of further elaborate. Like, he's not looking to nerf monsters per se uh so that one of the things they that we've heard from them about hardcore league uh wolves at low levels are actually quite deadly uh because they trip you and then you can't do anything and then they kill you or they have their friends kill you the point of this thread is not to like nerf wolves uh but maybe there's a spot where there's 30 wolves that spawn uh and this is outside of the intended difficulty range of that quest level that's kind of what they're looking for um any that jump out to you? Uh, I was trying to think. Low level wise, uh, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is going to be proof is in the poison. Yeah. That's a little bit for the level that it is. See, I'll counterpoint that, though, because I did it a couple times on Hardcore League, and I was actually surprised at how easy it was, with the exception of that beginning part with the traps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... But if you disable the trap correctly, it's pretty easy. Um, and I even remember, like, the mobs, uh, I remember being more deadly and, and stuff like that. They, um, kind of, it's a quest that I, I, I don't run hardly ever, because one, right, I, exactly. until recently, I don't 
haven't done a lot of lives, and grinding out lives is not something that I've really done a lot of. Uh, and you know, at level four, there's many other options to choose from. Why would I go to Proof of the Poison? <laughs> Why would anybody go to Proof of the Poison? <laughs> yeah. No, actually, no. It's not that bad of a quest. But it, once you get past that first trap part, uh, it's not that bad. I think it's definitely one of those quests that, that you think of immediately. Because um, that was one of the first quests I thought of, too. But I think the, the, one of the fun things about Hardcore League, right, was that you kind of had to reevaluate some of those low-level quests. Like, you know, this quest isn't as bad as I remember it being. Um. <laughs> But, but yeah, I was trying to think after I read the thread, and I can't think of anything else actually other than that's the only one that jumped right, right out. I at could me. see fresh, in, like fresh in the air, would be a quest that I also kind of want to put in that bucket. But again, having run it on Hardcore League, wasn't that bad. Um, it wasn't as bad as I remember it being. Uh, and to be honest, I think part of the reason why it can be that that area where you run into all the, the room with all the boxes, there's a lot mm -hmm. of mobs there, and if you just run in there, and and people haven't. My general experience with the groups in that quest is run in, scatter in every different direction you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then somebody dies, right? So that's kind of my impression of what, what happens there. And um, I know I kind of like perused this thread, and I was kind of impressed with some of the uh, discussion that was going on. I figured this quest was, or this thread was going to like derail really, really fast, but it mm -hmm. actually never has and it's been a really good thread yeah it's it's going on pretty good there is a, a challenge there too right like do you want to like how far do you want to take it right um you know there's like because one of the things you also said about like champions is not, like the idea here is not to and this is what i think one of the reasons about proof of the poison probably gets uh, singled out is because there's a lot of stuff in there that cast magic missile, and if you get a champion that has a debuff or something that stacks, um, they they had supposedly fixed uh, like a magic missile is only supposed to like stack one dot on you, but it still will tend to do more than one uh, at a time in a short amount of time, which can be pretty deadly at that level. Um, but there is the idea that uh, you know, this is not about champions either, right? Like, we're not trying to fix champions. Champions add a bit of randomization to it, um, which I'm sure many people kind of had the experience that <laughs> randomization on hardcore is surprising and shocking. I know I did. Um, Another thing, too, is they kind of have to, like, walk a thin little tightrope for this, too, because you don't want to, you know, as he said, nerf it too much to where it's too easy. Yep. But you don't want to make it too hard, so you got to find where's that good balance where you can just walk that rope, and it's like, okay, this quest is challenging enough at this level, but yeah, so uh, I don't envy them at all for trying <laughs> to take this on, but yeah. But they're definitely outliers, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and the one, the other two that kind of come to mind, uh, I'll put three out there that kind of come to mind, uh, in the Demon's Den, which... I think isn't actually as bad as people remember it. Uh, by the way, there's traps in that. The people who are running with me on hardcore know why that's funny. I almost killed a the, a friend in there uh, right before she got to 5,000 favor. Because uh, I literally said, I don't remember there being any traps in here, and then ran face first into a trap and we almost died. Uh, <laughs> that quest is kind of annoying, but it's not, you know, that I think that has more to do with this idea that, one, you have to kill these three things in different areas within the same amount of time. Um, so that can be kind of challenging. And there's a Merilith running around trying to kill you the whole time. Um, new Invasion, which um, I think objectively, that end fight is exponentially harder than other end fights at that level and the quest itself, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. it's a really ramped up difficulty spike there. Um, and Terminal Delirium, where you have a whole bunch, like, you spend most of the quest in a state uh, that does extra damage to you. Um, so those are kind of the ones that that kind of come spring to mind. If you want to throw raids in there, um, the exploding bats in uh, Vision of Destruction uh, and the quarry spawns at the end of Lord of Blades also are kind of spiky in terms of difficulty, um, much more so than the rest of the quest. So um, those are the kind of ones that come to mind. But, you know, at the same time, like, 
there should be some of that in the game too, right? Like harder, we do want harder quests. We don't want them all to be easy. So, uh, anything else you want to say about the? Nerf no, one? I don't think so. Just good luck and just be careful what you do. Don't make stuff too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested to see what he kind of comes up with, right? Right, and I really I hope it's. it's inter- in the, I hope it's in the release notes and stuff that we kind of see that. I do too, as well, and and I did like that how we did get a little small glint of some of the data they got from Hardcore. Yeah, because I mean, you and I both know we're never gonna find a lot of stuff out from the data that they got off Hardcore. I think they might just share as, more than than. I hope so. I hope they will, because I know they have a lot of data, and it's just interesting that this is just the first thing they pulled out. And I I would love to know like how many deaths total there were. I would love to know that. Yeah, I I do. One of the things I think that's really neat, and and I don't think we really talked about it too much in our post mortem. Uh, forgive me for not really remembering uh, a conversation that you haven't heard half of yet. Uh, but there's there's something valuable about getting that data when you're making people run quests that they don't necessarily normally run, right? Mm-hmm. Because right. It's, like, why don't people run X Quest? Well, there can be a lot of reasons. We don't want to prove for the poison because it's long for the level range. The XP isn't isn't really great in term like comparatively. There's no loot to speak of, and it's a little harder than the rest of the stuff. So why don't we don't run it? Because we don't want to. There's other better options. Um, Terminal Delirium is a pain in the ass to run. Tower of Frost, people don't really run because the loot's not that great for what it is, right? There's there's a lot of different reasons why people might, might run around. Um, riding the Storm out was never really a popular raid because, one, it was challenging, and two, people didn't... The loot wasn't that enticing. So, uh, But it is interesting. Like They are getting a lot of... I think they got a lot of valuable data, this being one of them, that they can actually address and, and take some action with. Uh, because we're you know the fun part about hardcore is it makes people run the game in ways they don't tend to run, like favor farming at level, right? It's one thing to say that proof of the poison is a pain in the butt to run for favor, but it's a whole another thing to say you have to run it by level eight <laughs> for favor. <laughs> right, exactly. very different experiences. So, uh, Black Friday. Uh, Cordovan said, expect our Black Friday sales to be announced and be made available next Wednesday, probably sometime in the afternoon with a formal start date of Thursday, November 28th. Uh, that would be, um, the, that would be Thanksgiving Day, uh, for the U.S. Um, uh, Black Friday, I think there was a little miscommun- misunderstanding, of, I'm guessing maybe some people who were asking were international, um, saying, hey, you haven't released Black Friday stuff. There are companies that have already been announcing Black Friday and Cyber Monday. For a reference point, Cyber Monday is this coming Monday, tomorrow, the 25th, right? It's the Monday before Thanksgiving, I think. No, it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. Is it the Monday after? I thought it was the Monday before. Mm, no, the Monday before is something, but it's another color. I forgot what it's called. It's, it's another Tuesday. thing hey. that they invented, yeah. <laughs> it's all arbitrary anyways, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving. Um, if you're wondering why it's called that, the my understanding is it's the day that... Uh, most of that, a lot of retail stores get into the black for the year, uh, if that makes any sense, or for their fiscal year. Or something. I don't know. Um, they do a lot of stupid sales, <laughs> even some starting on Thanksgiving. Although there's been, it, there was a, a, a the pendulum was swinging to the point where uh, in the U.S. there were all sorts of sales and stuff on Thanksgiving Day, like starting at six o'clock. Um, that's kind of going back the other direction now. Where they're saying we're not going to do that anymore. Good. <laughs> Uh, but uh, those are, will be coming next week. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the sales are because Cordovan has said that they're going to be kind of more. They're going to take into account what VIPs can utilize more. So I'm interested to see what that is. Yeah, uh, I am too, very much because we had talked about that on DDO Players News too. Like, what could that be? Because usually the Black Friday sales normally are like all the expansions. Usually there's like the half orc pack. Uh, the starter pack is usually included in that. Yeah, which aren't really what, VIP things, historically, right? Speaking, right. Yeah. Although I will say so. that if the if the starter pack is on sale, um, or seventy five percent off, get it. Seriously, 
It's a ten dollar yeah. pack to begin Agreed. with. So you're getting three but it's like three or four bucks. You get a level three hireling cleric uh on each server. Uh you get I think it comes with a catacombs pack, which is you know, whatever. But it, like it has two thousand points or something in it. Like the four bucks for the points is, is a good deal anyways. Um, Heck yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I'm going to hazard a guess and say that uh we'll probably get at least double bonus points. At least, you know, they did triple bonus points one year once. I don't think it was that time. I don't know if it was Black Friday or remember what it was for, but... Yeah, I can't remember. They only did it once. Yeah. I'm going to assume that we're going to get that. I'm also going to hazard a guess and say that Auto's boxes are going to be on sale sometime soon because the last time they were on sale was before Hardcore League. Uh, so it feels like we're pretty well due for that. Um, Personally, I'm kind of hoping... I never bought Favored Solar Artificer. Uh, because I just unlocked them with favor on my server, uh. But you know, with this hardcore league thing, <laughs> um, owning those owning those races would, or owning those classes would be a little more convenient. Uh, now, <laughs> but uh, we'll see what what gets on sale. I'm gonna. They haven't really said anything about December deals, so but I'm expecting that to happen as well. So we should get Black Friday sales coming up next weekend, and then. The next couple of weekends after that, we should be getting December deals, um, which they've been doing for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. And there's usually good stuff in those, yeah. too, as well. So um, It's a good time to spend money on DDO. <laughs> um, this is actually why I haven't bought the uh, the cosmetic pack for Keep on the Borderlands yet, because I'm kind of waiting for some of that stuff to hit. Uh, all right. Hey, let's go back to talking about Hardcore League. Uh, the Hardcore League results and After Party. Uh, so they post this. Hey, thank you everyone who participated in the first Hardcore League. We've now published the final standings for Reaper XP and Total Favor here. Uh, there seems to be some issues with that, actually. Um, I did notice that there were uh, a few... I didn't look at it too super close, but there are a few people who were saying, hey, I'm not on the list and I am I should be on the list, but it, like I'm not dead, uh, or the other way around. Um the characters I was expecting to be on the list are on the list that are that are my characters, so I don't have anything to speak to on that. I did make both lists. Yay, Congratulations! Man. Yeah, yeah, good job. Um, I the I went down a fair like I was. I think I have a picture on the favor leaderboard that I was I was like number four at one point, and now I'm in like the eighties. <laughs> um, actually, wow. the whole the favor leaderboard starts at 5,000 favor. Like, you had to have at least 5,000 favor before you're on that leaderboard now. Uh, but then it, which was pretty impressive. Uh, given given that I hit 5,000 favor about a month, just over a month into it, uh, I'm impressed that, that people really kind of started figuring it out and, and got there uh, pretty well. Um, this list will be published in the Hall of Heroes in the future as well. Uh, there were more than 6,000 characters who made it to at least level 5 and survived. That's impressive. That is amazing. Yeah. Right there, that there was 6,000. I'm sure there's at least three times that that died before they could get to level five, but... It, well, yeah, true, <laughs> true. Uh, they're also pleased to announce that the after party has begun. Hey, this was a little bit of a surprise. They have now reopened the Hardcore League server for players to get their things in order and transfer their character to another server. Make sure to read the, the fact here about character transformation or transfer po- process. Wow. Tongue went on holiday there. Um, character transfer from the Hardcore League to another live server can be done through the regular DDO game launcher. Uh, the timing is this. They will be keeping the Hardcore League server open through December 2nd, after which time the Hardcore server will close for a while, pending some wider server work they are planning. Uh, once that server work is complete, they will work to get character copies re-enabled for both the Hardcore League and other servers as well. It is not expected that character transfers will be re-enabled following December 2nd until probably early next year. So, a couple things to unpack there. Um, one, you can get on the hardcore server right now and get your characters off of that. Uh, pro tip, you can also go and roll daily dice on that server right now. Uh, you do not need to be a VIP to transfer characters. You only need to be a, v- a VIP to access hardcore server like i log into the hardcore server um or a season pass holder uh so uh it's going to be closed december at some time in december 2nd uh server work hey uh some stuff for between the lines here 
Uh, this is wider server work, so that means it's going to be hitting everybody. Uh, presumably. Uh, and it says character transfers will be re-enabled following December 2nd, or not be re-enabled till next year. Uh, that sounds to me like that's going to be across the board. That's, we're not just talking about hardcore league server here. I think that that's like everybody. Not going to be able to the way transfer. it's worded, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with you. Uh, so if you're planning a character transfer, get it done soon. Um, you still have a little over a week. You got about eight days uh, for the time of this recording to get that done. So make sure you get that done. Uh, and then they close by saying, "Taking part in watching this first hardcore league server has or hardcore league has been great, and we hope you've had a good time too. Stay tuned for more information about season two of Hardcore League in early 2020." What? I'm shocked. No, uh, not really. Yeah, yeah, season two. I mean, we all knew it was coming, right? I mean. It was I would popular. think everybody knew it was it, it was popular. It was really popular. I think just from kind of some of the reaction I had heard from some of the devs, I think it was a little more popular than they thought it was going to be. Yeah, no. Talking the interview I did with them a couple weeks ago, like <laughs> they were a little floored about how popular, like especially the like just even in the design process were. They had initially thought about giving everyone three lives, and then the players council was like, "No, one's good. We like one." And they're like, "You sure? Really? One? Just one? <laughs> Just one? Okay." <laughs> um, I do think it would be fun if you if you could quote buy lives, but it cost you something that you were working towards. Like maybe you could uh, spend like two hundred favor to come back to life, or like. 10,000 Reaper XP or something. That could make it a little interesting, right? Ooh, yeah, that's an interesting idea. I don't know how you do that technically, but... Um, yeah, that might be hard to pull off, but... Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, so it sounds like... Th so there's two ways you could read that statement, too. Uh, stay tuned for more information about Season 2 of Hardcore League starting early 2020, or they're going to give us information in early 2020. I think it's probably more the later, the latter... We'll yeah, I read it as in we're going to get information in early 2020. Yeah. Um, I think most people, I did see a few posts in response to that. Uh, too soon. <laughs> early 2020, exactly. too soon. So I was about to say, hashtag too soon. Um, so, I mean, there was a population dip on the normal server, the rest of the servers. So people are cognizant about that. Uh, bonus days through November 24th. You can get plus 10 Treasure Hunters boost. Uh, and then the sales through November 28th. Uh, adventure in advance, 25% off of select adventure packs, quest XP elixirs on uh, November 28th. Also, the weekly coupon code, a free call of Destiny elixir, the coupon code Destiny Calls through November 28th. Uh, what that does is it allows you to earn XP in a Destiny that you're not in currently. Uh, Which I do not think that's ever been a free that coupon know. before. This is the first time I've yeah. seen that, so that's Pretty a nice really one. good one. Yeah, it is. Um, probably they're, they're trying to, you know, boost sales of it. Hey, here you go. Try this out. See how much you like it. First one's always free. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me get you. Uh, Alright, community news. Uh, we have the 360th Chronicle. Uh, they're mentioning the hardcore uh, league server. Uh, also, I think Jerry did uh, Jerry twitched like the final moments uh, of hardcore league, which sounds like something that he would do. Uh, so that's kind of neat. So you can check that out on Twitch as well. Uh, point blank range with Accio uh, is the newest streamer on Dido Stream, so you can check out his first show and join him uh, Mondays nine thirty a.m. Eastern early show. Uh, Nice little variety there, though. Uh, Kima is doing a video series teaching you how to run Kenneth challenges, uh, so you can check out Picture Portals. You're going to have to compare those to Lessa's uh, challenge videos, right? Uh, let's see, the player spotlight. Uh, they've been sent several suggestions to highlight uh, Nimnoin Orliet from Orion in the spot, so let's dedicate this player spotlight to him. He recently put together a series of videos about the attack on Stormweath's quest chain. He was recently named Guild Leader of Arcane Alliance on Orion. Keep up the great work. Uh, the comment for the week. What magical DDO weapon property would be particularly useful in a real-life kitchen? I'm going to go with Arcot on this one. Flaming seems to be the obvious choice. 
Vorpal wouldn't be bad to you, probably. Are you sure? Think about well, how many times a year people yeah. cut their fingers while okay, they're cutting true. vegetables. <laughs> true. Dude, how sharp of a knife do you... <laughs> true, let me step that Vorpal combat back. Very, very true. True story. I have a coworker who loves sharpening knives. In fact, I should probably have him sharpen some of my kitchen knives. Um, And he always will tell people his payment is getting the story of when you cut yourself. And he actually sharpened one of our other coworkers' knives and said, now be careful, you will cut yourself on these, they are sharp. Within 10 minutes, the guy had not left our work, and there's no reason for him to even be using one of these knives in this time frame. He cut himself. Oh, jeez. He sliced his hand open. I don't think he needed to have stitches, but he, he was bleeding. Um, so, a vorpal knife in a kitchen. Concerning. Well, it would be interesting, we'll put it that way. Yeah, but consider who your the DM of your life is. <laughs> okay, all right. Because if your DM is the kind of person that when you fumble badly with a vorpal weapon, you cut your own head off, consider if you really want a vorpal knife in your kitchen. <laughs> True. Uh, it makes make for interesting cooking, though. Yeah. We'll put it that way. Uh, Fansite news, we got a shout-out for our episode last week. Uh, Dito Players News got a shout-out as well. Uh, running keep on the borderlands i was like uh dito stream is a great place to find your next video live stream you can check out recent shows by fridays and ice alex and lynn and dvopl uh twitch also has a growing community uh <laughs> funny they says a growing community and less people that have been twitching for like years uh voodoo spice from tom and nubacabra are the ones who got shout outs there uh on youtube cusader betrays friends axel goes through the notes and chaka shows off uh, total chaos optional uh, Chaka was one of the guys who was at the top of the favor lo- and Reaper leaderboards. Uh, and let's see. That stuff was all kind of something to talk about. Uh, D&D night on DDO stream. Uh, tonight, uh, shortly, uh, we better keep, pick up the pace here. Uh, Heroes of Battle Rise. Um, that is Evil Beaker as DM with both of us as players. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Dito Kasplat is forging head without me. Kind of funny. Uh, and there, that kind of covers uh, news uh, there. Uh, we did get uh, some lightning post this week. Uh, a couple of people wrote in uh, regarding Hardcore League. Um, so we've had, uh, we did the postmortem, started the postmortem last week. Uh, and before that, we did um, the uh, interview with the devs, uh, Ask the Devs Hardcore League. Uh, so some people kind of wrote in uh, about that. Um, let's see. Uh, Growler wrote in and said it was a fascinating, entertaining Acid Devs podcast on Hardcore League, especially around the 38 minute mark where the Cordovan comments on the death announcements unexpected uh, affect reaction from the community. Uh, so, and he expects a lot of people to be happy about the after party. Uh, yeah, the, if you didn't hear, the, the death messages were only, were only were not supposed to start at level two. <laughs> they were concerned about it being spammy. I was actually concerned about it being kind of spammy. It didn't turn out to be very spammy. And it was really fun to see someone die at level two. Yeah, it was because you were like, "What did they do?" Especially when it was repeated. How can you like, die at two? Like... There was definitely somebody I saw die, and then within another hour, they died at level two again. <laughs> like, oops. Yeah, oops. A little reckless there. Uh, Paragon uh, wrote in: Hardcore League was great. Really, a lot of fun playing with so many people from other servers. Met some really friendly people and was able to learn a lot just by playing with a variety of good players. Uh, based the rewards on favor earned and experience earned was not at all balanced. There's no way to fudge favor, but you allowed the fudging XP to a crazy extreme. You allowed the purchase of XP tomes that stack with XP pots and guild XP bonus and the voice of the master bonus with a 70% XP bonus. You only need to earn 60k XP to be given 104k XP. I think he's mostly talking about Reaper here. Uh, this is very unbalanced in a competitive setting. If you're going to have a competitive leaderboard, then make it fair. Uh, all in all, I very much enjoyed the Hardcore League and hope you find a way to make this server a permanent place to play. Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of people that kind of shared that opinion. I I think straight off the bat, the voice of the master is up for fair, up for grabs, right? I mean, anyone can get that the same way. It doesn't matter who you are. You're on the same quest chain. Same with the man on the world shaper, right? I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I don't really think the guild XP bonus is that big a deal either. Um, and even the guild buffs in general. 
I mean, everyone can get those. Uh, and it's not like the, the big massive guilds were um, hoarding those XP buffs or anything like that. Like, people were giving away ship invites, all, as far as I know. It, it, people were happy to give ship invites, so. Um, the other stuff, I mean, I kind of go back and forth on this to a little extent, but, I mean, it's there for everyone. I purchased some stuff that gives me these bonuses. Like, so what? Yeah, I mean, you still gotta if survive. You wanna, <laughs> if you were to spend the money, just know you could die, and that money you spent is gonna be for nothing. So, yeah. I mean, look, it's yeah. not like uh, it, it's not like the leaderboards were super high, uh, and the people that that hit the four hundred thousand Reaper XP. I mean, those bonuses helped, sure, but I think it's pretty easy to say based on. Um, it took people a long time. I think it was probably two months before anyone hit four hundred thousand reaper XP, and even then, like the the final number of people that hit four hundred thousand reaper XP, it's not a lot of people. It wasn't a bunch. Uh, so I think that no, granted, those bonuses help, but I think the the far more impactful thing on that leaderboard was strategy and staying alive. That's exactly it. Like you said, you still have to stay alive. It doesn't matter what you buy. It doesn't matter what you go to the store to get. You still got to use tactics and you still got to stay alive to do it. Yeah. Now, if the bottom of that leaderboard was, was a million Reaper XP, I think you'd have a more interesting conversation about that. Right. Um, but there weren't a lot of people that hit 400,000 Reaper XP. I didn't. Well, that was more because the people I was running with, like, all right, we're done. <laughs> That's enough. Uh, we want to go back and do other things. So, uh, but I think that was it. Was much more a the people that that succeeded on that leaderboard because that that Reaper leaderboard, Reaper XP leaderboard. I think the bottom was sixty, like sixty thousand, sixty seventy thousand, which is not that much <laughs> if you really start. Like he kind of pointed out that you can get sixty thousand. XP and get 104,000. Less than 100 people got that and stayed alive. So um, I understand the, the sense that other people have an advantage over me. But from my standpoint, not that many people uh, leverage that advantage very well. Uh, John says, I'd like to see this made into a free-to-play annual event, allowing e even brand new free players to preview the, the whole game like a VIP. Like it would mean more players on the hardcore server and likely sell a few more subs or at least some point bundles. Could maybe even include some video point rewards. Um, also, maybe not have it going when another event is planned. Uh, Night Rebels. Um, good point in the last part. Uh, I really liked what Samus was saying, and this might actually come be in the conversation following. Um, this idea that uh, sell a bundle or like a because right now you can get a two month VIP, or sixty day VIP, or a year VIP. Uh, if you sold a like hardcore uh, VIP pass kind of a thing that was maybe a little less expensive or or had some other goodies, some hardcore goodies in there, that would probably be a good way to do it. I don't really mind that it's a VIP only thing though. Of course, I've been a VIP the whole time, so. Yeah, and that didn't bother me either. I know a lot of people were really upset about that, and I didn't quite get what the whole I mean thing about that was. I don't mean to be insensitive, but really I think what that comes down to is I want to do this, and I don't want to pay extra to do this. I mean, I think that's kind of the, the mentality, right? Yeah. Uh, which is fine. I mean, you're absolutely entitled to that opinion. It's not wrong. It's not right. It's just your opinion, and this is how they chose to do that. Right. Um, I think that the legacy server on Lotro was that VIP only. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so they're consistent there. Um, so I think Samus' solution is the best one. Like, give us. A... Oh yeah, I definitely like that idea. That would be a great, and I bet they would sell a lot of those because I bet there's a lot of free IP or premium players that would have loved to partake in hardcore and couldn't. And that would solve that problem right there. So that is a great idea. By the way, you can get a lot of points on the hard, on a new server, like the hardcore server. 
Um, they're wiping out the character data, so it'll be interesting to see if those favor rewards all reset. Uh, but uh, I'd hazard a guess that if you played enough and really were going for kind of the favor rewards, you could probably make up a twenty or a sixty day pass in points, maybe. Or at least you get a pretty good point. Pretty close, yeah. I bet you could get pretty close. I'm pretty sure. Like, I spent some points over there. I, you know, I don't think I made enough points to, to cover that, but um, I got a fair amount of points at the same time. So, uh, Evil J, uh, Rorden. So this is talking about um, appeals. Uh, <laughs> Sam was talking about having an appeal system. He said no to appeals because we just have a backlog of people trying to lawyer up just to try. Just cause issues. SSU become tied up as the real corpse with frivolous cases started by people who have no business complaining. Life isn't fair to deal with it. I mean, I'm kind of in the life isn't fair to deal with it. Dead is dead. But that has more to do with my my pragmatic thinking of if you allow appeals, where do you draw the line? It's so much easier to draw the line dead is dead than it is. Well, let us know oh, if something yeah. bad happens and bugs out or something like that. Um, I doubt they'll do any kind of appeal system. Even even on the obvious bug, even if you have a, a video showing how you jumped on a monster's head and, for three seconds and then got 20,000 damage of falling damage. I mean, <laughs> it happens. Sorry. Dead is dead. It sucks. <laughs> and I know that would leave a sour taste in my mouth. I didn't even have that problem. The two times I died left a sour taste in my, my mouth a little bit. So Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, all right. Uh, that'll close us out this week. Uh, hey, you want to plug DDO Players News? Anything else? Sure, yeah. It's uh, ddoplayers.com. It's the website. Uh, we record the podcast on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. Uh, you can join us live in the chat for that at uh, ddoplayers. Uh, I'm sorry, ddoplayers.com slash live. And uh, the podcast released usually on Wednesday, uh, the same week, uh, if I can get it edited in time. But, you know, <laughs> you know how editing is, Patrick. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's behind the scenes. No, but, I, I do as little editing as I possibly can. And I'll be honest, I'm starting to be that way, too, because it's a lot of work to edit. But so. I, uh, I try to do it all. You know, if I need to go back and edit something and I know I need to go back and edit something, I'll go back and edit it. But I try to avoid it as much as I can. Yep, it just I agree. It takes time out of the day to do it. Uh, there's even <laughs> weeks where, uh, you know, it. in reality, it takes me probably 10 minutes to pull timestamps. And there's weeks I don't even do that just because, like, I, 10 minutes to do this is not. Sorry, guys. <laughs> right. It's not worth right. it to me. But yeah, it's uh, ddoplayers.com. And if you're not familiar with us, we're a little bit of a different DDO podcast. Uh, the first half of our show, we talk about DDO. And then we jump into like uh, Dungeons and Dragons role-playing news and tabletop game news. And we talk about uh, like geek shows, geek movies, comic books, stuff like that. So we're a little bit of a different show. But we do uh, focus on DDO for usually about the first 20 minutes of each show or so. Yeah. Um... You guys almost need to change your name. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, I've been thinking about that. Eh. It's interesting how the show had changed, but oh, it well. basically all stemmed up from the point when we had like no DDO news at all. That's when we started adding all the other stuff in, and then it was just like... How long are your Lotro Players yeah. news episodes? Uh, wow, that show has been going. I'm no, like how think. long, like time wise, how long do those oh. episodes last? Uh, they're anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. Usually, the shows are sometimes a little longer. See, I, I almost wonder if what you really need to do is, is branch off a third podcast to talk about all the other stuff, <laughs> which have Dito Players News be its own, which that's conversation you've had. I'm, yeah, I'm in talks about that i'm really yeah. thinking about doing that um, so that might be a thing yeah. we'll see stay right? tuned stay <laughs> tuned uh anyways thanks to draculator for joining me and a little bit of short notice too uh and kind of hanging out it's always fun to have another voice in the room uh and uh thanks to all the other contributors for ddo cast and to staying some games the wizard of the coast and the side readers for hosting the podcast uh, if you'd like to support the show, uh, you can visit our website, ditocast.com, or you can support us on Patreon. 
Uh, you know, I'll be honest. The the costs for the show are pretty small. Uh, we've been grad- grandfathered in for a couple of things, so uh, that money pretty much just goes to when there's enough money in there, I buy prizes for stuff. Um, so, and actually, like full dis like if you really want full disclosure, uh, I think uh I hit the black on Dio Cast like three or four months ago. <laughs> um, otherwise we've been operating in the red uh since I took over. Uh anyways, uh but you can support the show if you like. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. Uh we're happy to have this be a free show for everybody. Uh if you have a DDO themed webpage or you twitch DDO and you'd like to be featured on our website, you can email us at DDOcast at gmail dot com. Be happy to do that for you. And you can hit us up at DDOcast.com for show notes, MP3s, our calendar, previous shows and other fun stuff. Uh if you'd like to be a part of the show, if you have a comment, uh a question you'd like to hear us answer, a topic you'd like to hear us discuss, or you just want to say hi. Leave a comment or email us at dedocast at gmail.com. You can also find us on social media and follow latest cast updates. I'm at Dedocast on Twitter. Draculetta is at Draculetta underscore 72 and at DDO players. There you go. Uh, so stay tuned uh, for part two and the conclusion of our Hardcore League postmortem discussion. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we are going to continue our discussion on Hardcore League, uh, our post-mortem. Uh, so this will be part two of that. Uh, went a little bit uh, longer than I wanted to do for just one show. Uh, so we'll get to talk more about Hardcore League uh, after death. Um, with me this week to continue the discussion, uh, we've got Strim Tom. Hey, how's everybody? <laughs> Uh, and we also have Samus Karobo. Greetings and salutations. Yeah, uh, so uh, last time we were kind of talking about, you know, what was fun, what wasn't fun, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, but we didn't kind of get through everything we want to talk about, uh, so we're going to keep talking about Hardcore League. Um, and I think where I want to kind of focus in on today is, was Hardcore League a success? However you want to define that. Um, what worked well, what didn't work well, should we do this again? What should that look like? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so just kind of starting from the beginning, was it a success? Absolutely. I think that just but just based on how many people were playing Hardcore League all of the time, I think that as its own individual product, it had a lot of a lot of drive. A lot of people wanted to play Hardcore League. A lot of people were interested in Hardcore League. Um, so if you look at Hardcore League in a bubble, I think that is definitely was successful at getting people's attention and being something that other players wanted to see. When you talk about how it impacted the regular server populations, Ooh, um, that's negative. a different story. Yeah. The only people that really know the answer to how successful it was at the end of the day is probably going to be SSG. Because I, I can tell you that playing on Arganesson, uh, right at the beginning of Hardcore League, there was not many LFMs up on Arganesson. Not all, not all the time. But it's not like you couldn't find a group. It was just a lot harder. Um, I don't know if you know a lot of people had that experience, or there's a lot of other servers doing that. But it's uh, hardcore league was fun at least. Yeah, on that server population thing, that's kind of an interesting question, right? Because there were definitely less participation on the main servers. Like people definitely felt that. Um, although I kind of have this weird experience with some of that because I think a lot of people run in fairly, uh, not everyone obviously, but a lot of people run kind of in close tight knit groups. So if, if your group was over on hardcore or not on hardcore, right? Like you still have that, that group. Um, and like my guild, like there were some people running on hardcore, but not a lot, but it definitely still impacted like raid nights and stuff like that. We were trying to get more people involved. Like yeah, when we so... talk about, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, after you, go ahead. I was gonna say when we talk about like the success of Hardcore League, it kind of boils down to is it was it successful enough for Sandstone Games to run it again? Um, 
because if if they want to run it again and do a second hardcore league, that's going to depend on at the end of the day the money. You know, did did right. they make enough money? Did they lose enough money? Did people? What's the player retention like? Did the people that went to hardcore league did they go back to the regular server after they were done playing? Did they just quit the game because they were uninterested or they got frustrated or fed up with it? Did people on the regular servers not only did the server population migrate, but then it also went down because people got frustrated that they couldn't find other players? Or was everything cool and we don't have that kind of data? Uh, I think that you know the if Sandstone Games decides they want to do a new one, if because it's successful, it's going to be one hundred percent. Was the money there? Was the player investment and attention there? Um, and that's really hard to see from you know one server perspective. See, so I think Stream Tom actually hit exactly the point that I was about to make. Was that it depends on the metrics that you're going to use, and obviously money being number one, uh, population number two. But I also think it's going to come down to a lot of what the feedback was. So this is DDO's very very first ladder system. We've never had anything like that. A lot of other games are built around it, like Diablo, completely built around it. Uh, I'm not as familiar with some of the other games, um, like Age of... What's the other? I, I just uninstalled it because I never played it. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, Diablo, Path of Exile. Diablo, uh, what's... The, I know you play it a lot, Stream Tom. Um, it's like set on the on the beach. Yeah, Path of Exile. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got it. You, I I heard all those together as one big word: Diablo, Path of Exile. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. different things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. But I know that they run uh, they run ladders, and I think ladders are a very interesting thing. And that DDO has finally figured out that they could tap into these, and in a way that they can make them work. And I think that if they can continue to ha add that level of competition, even if it's not necessarily in a hardcore league in some other way to add ladder competition in some sort of season type limited time frame type scenario with rewards that people give value to it will generate revenue i feel like that's something that was missing in ddo and that for value added it was a success for revenue i feel like from my personal experience it was probably a success i don't buy astral shards on the live server if i want something i'll just run it again or i'll do without but on the hardcore server if I needed a piece of Ravenloft gear and I didn't have Astral Shards to reroll, I went to that store and I bought Astral Shards and I rerolled. Like, it didn't matter to me at that point. Um, I just did it. And I think from a monetary situation, it pro I feel like that was more common than not. So I feel like it would have worked. Um, we were actually talking, uh, Patrick and I, before the stream started, that I feel like if they would have sold a three month VIP pack called Hardcore League Pass or something, it would have sold like hotcakes for all the people who couldn't play in the Hardcore League because they are uh, free to play players or premium players and couldn't get over in the server, but they didn't want to do sign up for the subscription to play on the Hardcore League. I feel like they could have, they would have sold a ton of that. I feel like there was opportunities to make money there that they didn't consider. And it would have pushed more. Um, so yeah, I think I think personally, I would say a success because of all the added challenges and the added value. Monetarily, I feel like there was a value. Server population, again, I feel like there was a lot of of added value in there. The other thing that we're not forgetting, or we are forgetting, that we need to not forget, is when people move these characters over from the hardcore to the regular server. This is going to be the first real experience for most people for transferring a character between worlds or between mm. servers. And if it turns out that people want to play with those friends that they made on the other servers, you know, will they pony up the money to move a character? I already did. Full disclosure, I already did. Like, I found a friend on another server, and I moved my TR product over to their server so I could burn through some lives with them. Is there an SM? Uh No. Oh. Sorry. So like I said, I feel like the opportunities for for value are there. It's just a matter of can they continue to find new and interesting ways to make it successful. Because I tell you, if they rerun the, the same thing, but they just like tweak the cosmetics like they like to do for some of the other events, I will be less excited. I will still do it because of the boost for the stream, I think, is value. But I will personally be less invested. 
But yeah. if they change it up in a, in a way that's new and exciting, which I think we'll get to down in yeah. a little bit, I think that they'll continue to add more value. Yeah, I think the, when you talk about was it a success or not, I, I think unequivocally the answer has to be yes. Um, because unless you're unless you're the the stick in the mud, sorry, uh, but you know the guy that was that didn't come on hardcore league at all and um, you know played on your home server and couldn't find people, um, you know it was a lot harder. If you're not that person, I think you you probably you know if you were on hardcore league you probably had a lot of fun. Um, I I don't know that I've I found anyone or heard from anyone that uh hated hardcore uh uh from playing it, right? Um there are definitely some people that had a like maybe had that sour that that low low experience. Um you know, died from a bug and maybe that soured them to the the whole experience, but um I I think most people I haven't seen anyone who wouldn't say that they they didn't have fun uh, on hardcore league. Um and I think monetarily like I I get the sense that uh SSG kind of was blown away a little bit about how popular it was. Um, and if you listen to the interview we had with them uh, a couple weeks ago in our Ask the Devs episode, um, you know that that kind of experience for the devs, I think, was was consistent through the whole process of, you know, they because they talked about how they kind of started approaching this, like, would people be interested in this? One only one life, you know, maybe that's maybe we should do three and. Uh, and then they, you know, it was the players' council. And the players' council was no one life. This sounds great. And the, the, like their whole kind of process, uh, to paraphrase what they said, was was very much of a, are you guys sure? Like, are you sure you're going to enjoy this? Really? Like that? Well, again, <laughs> I feel like the under the the lack of experience with the league mentality mm-hmm. and that level of competition, it's really hard as a Magic the Gathering player and a semi-competitive Magic the Gathering player, I understand the idea of what it means to be competitive. Sure. And DDO, and uh, so many people, they, their competitive nature in DDO because it's a P versus E environment is not fueled. Right? So it's, it's just a, a thing that is lacked in DDO. And people try to do things like, well, GPS challenges or or stuff like that as a way to make up for it. But this was a straight feed to that competitive nature which is something that the game just never had which is completely new and foreign for people who play this game all the time and i think that's that's what the fire that they're te- they finally tasted and i feel like that could be fueled and fed really really well i don't well, know a player that's always like i've always been interested in like any game that has some type of ladder on it because it gets exciting to know where you compare how you are comparing against other people what the competition is like um and being able to participate in games where you can see your progress up against other people, that, that just feels really good. And the weird thing is, DDO has now a lot of systems allow you to do that. You have sure. basic systems like the um, like the challenges, which could have a leaderboard for like the points and stuff. They, and they did have a leaderboard, but they don't currently. Um, Reaper mode, you, know, you could have uh, market completions that reset on a you know, bi-weekly or monthly or whatever basis you want to do for people completing quests like that. Like, there's a lot of different options that they have for making stuff. And the fact that they went with Hardcore League, for me, it's just so exciting to suddenly see that, you know, every day you log in, okay, where am I on the leaderboard now? What's going on? Oh, this this person, they're not there on the leaderboard. What happened? Did they die? <laughs> you know, and that kind of, like, level of excitement when you're watching stuff all the time. Or sometimes more often, that person hasn't moved in two weeks. Are they dead? <laughs> um, you know that's an interesting thing. You start talking about that that um, that ladder, the leaderboard. I don't know. Like I don't know if that was. If I think about the the, the aspects of hard league, I feel like that was the least successful aspect of it. And what I mean by that is, a lot of people that I kind of ran into, they didn't really care about the leaderboard as like it was a cool benefit. Um, and I kind of had this experience too. Like, it was fun to look at the leaderboard. And kind of see where people were at, um, but like I never really found, and it was it, that was also kind of fun to like, you know, I'd go in, I'd check the leaderboard, right, and then you'd see one of those names go across the screen, dying, like whoa, that person was at like two hundred thousand Reaper XP, 
oh, that hurts. Um, but I never really found it to be like an impetus for me. Like it was, it was a bonus that I was on the leaderboard at X, Y, or Z spot, um, and kind of see where I was relative to others. But like, I never really felt the drive to like be high on the leaderboard or be like that. Like, can I get to the number one spot? And that was a, I felt like that was a similar experience to a lot of people that I kind of ran in with and, and would talk about it with that the the leaderboard wasn't really a driving factor for them. They wanted to get the the goodies you got from getting the five thousand favor or or whatever, but being on the leaderboard was kind of like eh, whatever. See, well, the leaderboard disagree. wasn't easily. Yeah. Oh, I was go go ahead. You, you go ahead. I was just gonna say I would disagree. the The primary reason that you know I I told last week how the reason why I actually became motivated was I I mentioned the cloak, but my real drive was to get on the leaderboard. My sure. one and only goal was to be one of those names on that leaderboard when it was over. And that was that was it. And there was a while there. I, I, I know StreamCon probably didn't n- notice or care, but I was specifically doing things to try to stay ahead of StreamCon for as long as I possibly could. <laughs> oh, really? And, and, then, and then I started, I kind of let that slide a little bit because he was, you know, I think Strim Tom Five just like rocketed past me on the Reaper board. <laughs> I'm like, all right, and I it was because I was helping people level up so many times. I mean, I just I became that guy who got you from one to ten, or got you from one to twelve, and I just became that guy. And like, I had to let that part of the comp in my in my heart, that part of the competition had to go, you know. And sure. then there at the end, I know Strim Tom was doing a lot of stuff on other servers, and he was playing a lot of games. And- this is my chance to try to catch up. <laughs> did you? And it, it, it no, no, I totally did not. I'm. I think I ended at like 84th on the regular board, and my Reaper character um, died somewhere like in 78. So I'm sure they're going to remove her off of that list at some point. But that that's why I took that for the, my desk. The desk that that took me the hardest hit was that one. And the reason why is because again, that was the character that we were about to hit the 5,000 favor on, and I was about ready to make the jump into, like, power leveling up to 30, where I thought I'd be able to catch Grim Tom again and surpass him on the Reaper board. Yeah. And again, the only reason I was using Strim Tom is because Strim Tom's the only other person who streams as much as I do, or nearly as much as I do, and I could go over there and see. Mm-hmm. You know, we're the two... Two most known names, if you're watching the Twitch streams for DDO, and you and we always, you know, Strim Tom, Strim Tom, one through five. I'm Samus, except I tinged the first letter of the name. So you could go in there and you could see who we were. Yep. That so was, yeah. that was kind of fun to see where you guys were, actually. You'd see a name on the leaderboard that you kind of recognize. Exactly. So with. for me, that part of it was the most important part of the competition. And again, nobody necessarily knew I was competing against anybody but me. Sure. But I was competing in my heart. And I recognize that as a person who's like reflective. Like that's who I was trying to beat. I was trying to beat Strim Tom on the leaderboard. And that's it. Like I think the the fact that the leaderboard is kind of only has a hundred people on it means that most of the people that care about the leaderboard are the people that are trying to get to spot one hundred or the people that are already on it. Um but I think one of the issues that the leaderboard had in general was like accessibility. I think that having the leaderboard, you know, be oh, yeah, in a specific a spot, spot in game yeah. was like a bad idea. It should have been in a menu somewhere that anybody can access at any time. Mm-hmm. It should have been on the website. Um, it should look nice, you know, instead of being like basic aerial font created thing that looks like, you know, it was done out of like, it just didn't look nice. Yeah, like a lot of the DDO's UI elements, they didn't use the, the Dungeons and Dragons online font. There was no color. Uh, There's no numbers, so it was hard to count where you actually were. And again, it was hard to access. So I think when you have something that's visually unappealing and that a lot of people aren't too interested in actually going to look at, because anytime you want to know where you are, or what's going on with your with your thing, you have to go to the Hall of Heroes again. Mm-hmm. And and I think that um, that that was a mistake. And if you're not playing on the hardcore server, you don't even know. Sure, correct. Yeah. What if what if you're somebody who's like you know you didn't play hardcore and then you check the leaderboard and you go like oh wow. It's been three weeks and people are only at 30,000 Reaver XP. Maybe I could actually do something about this. Maybe I could come in and win. And then you go ahead and log in and check it out. Yeah. Agreed. You could definitely tell when, when people figured out the the key to, or like the, the optimal way to get the Reaper XP because suddenly people started shooting up that leaderboard. Um, well, there was, there was a point where uh, I believe it was 
0 for 3, uh, or somebody else died, um, and they were TRing, and they died during the TR because they were doing Reaper 3s with uh, while yeah. leveling with Favorite Souls. And great, great strategy, but they died. And then when you die at like 350k Reaper XP, you quit the league. And then everyone's like, well, <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. And it was a TR team. So that's when they went to Epics and you kind of figured it out. Yeah. I always figured that was the best way to do it. I just never got the personnel and never got up there. But anyways, um, yeah, I think the the leaderboard thing, going back to that, like, I think for the people that were interested in it, it was a lot of fun. But I, I still, I think there was a lot of people that, that didn't really care. And my ev- my biggest evidence for that is, if you look at the leaderboard, you can tell where people stopped. Like, a lot of people, like, hit that 5,000 favor and stopped. <laughs> or they hit the 100,000 Reaper XP and stopped. <laughs> um. But I think the people that that were really really into it, it was a lot of fun. And even for me, like casually, uh, like uh, I probably still on the leaderboard uh, as far as I know. Um, but you know, I stopped and I'm like, all right, well, whatever. And uh, you know, I got the picture of me being fourth in favor. Uh, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me that there's a moment of vanity where you did care about the leaderboard enough that you stuck, you hit a screenshot. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. That moment, those moments are important for a game to sure. feed the competition level. And I think that it was a, it maybe not as many people latched onto it as I'm giving it credit to, but that was a hundred percent, like probably seven of the people I ran with regularly's motivation. I checked the leaderboard every day when I logged in. Oh, yeah. I did too. Right. Did, like it was fun. It was fun to check. Right. And, and, but for me, it wasn't the motivating factor of why I was playing. Is kind of the point that I was making. Um, it was kind of this ancillary, oh, this is cool, um, kind of thing. Um, so, but uh, the other thing I want to say, like going back a little bit into the idea, of, is it a success? And I, I would say, from a monetary standpoint, think about the number of times that uh, just between the three of us, like you bought something that you wouldn't have bought on a normal server, right? Like I haven't bought XP pots in. Like other than in uh, bundle packs, I don't know that I've really bought XP pots, right? Like I get XP pots from when I buy an autos box, um, or when you know the traveler box or all these other places where I get XP pots from, right? Like I've never, other than hardcore league, I've never gone in and and bought a stack of sovereign XP pots. Um, and you know, Samus, you were talking about how you bought um. I bought shards. Astral shards and stuff like that, right? I like, bought anti-beholder crystals. Sure. And I bought, um, like, heavy fort and water-breathing augment. And those are things you'd, you'd never buy on the main server, right? No, I buy I buy the augments from time to time, mostly because I don't like it when people cast water-breathing on me. Yeah. <laughs> so that I, I buy the water-breathing ones from time to time, but I don't buy astral shards, and... I I don't think before the hardcore league I have ever purchased a anti beholder crystal because I just have never cared. Right. But when yeah. death is the the <laughs> difference, you know, I'll spend seventy five DDO points to not die to the beholder. Sure. Yeah, I tried to make it a point not to buy anything because before the hardcore league started, there was a bunch of people who were like, "Uh, it's just gonna be a bunch of people chasing up the leaderboard with all those XP potions, and you can't win unless you use XP potions." And I'm like, it's probably going to be the people that have coordinated groups, know what they're doing, and are able to play the most often, more than people who use XP potions. Like, and that, as it turns out, that was true. All the people at the top of the Reaper leaderboard, like, those are all people that just ground every day for weeks and consistently didn't die. Um, now, granted, yeah. the people at the very, very top were using XP oh. potions. But even if you cut out how much XP they got using potions, uh, they're still at the top. There was just for, you know, I guess, aesthetic of having a very large number. Um, you still had so to I'll not to die. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I try to make it a point not to buy anything. Uh, I did break down. I bought two things. I bought Tome of Fate because I didn't want to grind out more Epic Destinies because I hate grinding Epic Destinies. So I was like, I'm just going to buy the two Fate points. This is fine. Um, so I could get the twists that I wanted. And I did buy some Astral Shards for rerolls. Yeah. When we start thinking about that, though, like I, I, you got to figure that, I mean, people spent money that they wouldn't have spent on this, right? People bought well, but, people bought VIP uh, subscriptions and stuff like that. So, 
I'd like to. I would love to be the fly on the wall that had the actual numbers of people who bought VIP for this again. Sure. First, first the imaginary people who would have just signed up for a hardcore league pass, um, being marketed correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I didn't buy an XP potion. I collected collectibles and turned in the shards for that. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I was going to make there is. I don't know about you guys, but I make this joke about how the harbor is filled with the body of my little wizards. <laughs> because I would roll a wizard, I would run to the harbor, I would start doing quests on Reaper 1 or Reaper 2, and I would get to like 4 or 5. Um, and obviously before 4, I'd jump back to Korthos and do that. And I'd run back into the harbor, do like 1 or 2 quests, and a Reaper would get me. And that would take me like 2 hours. And then I would just start over again. So in like two hours, uh, what what do you earn? You earn something like 400 favor, something like that, 300 favor. Yeah, something like so, that. So I, I was making uh, DDO points. I didn't buy new DDO points uh, so much as I cleared out the points that I was using consistently. Sure. Um, so that was how it happened for me. But again... I basically, the new harbor is about 50 feet further out because of all the wizards that are dead in the harbor from my, from just me alone. Yeah. So I don't know if everybody else had a similar experience, but maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Oh, I got so many points making new characters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I still spent, spent more than, or spent more points than I, I earned. Uh, well, I mean, speaking of spending, I know before a lot of people were kind of upset and they're hoping that um, Saints Snow Games is going to make an adjustment so that way you don't have to be VIP to play on the hardcore server. Um, but I think something that kind of gets circled back around to a lot on, on that topic is that, like, just to start, there's a lot of people that complain that there's no reason to, to pay for VIP because mm -hmm. they own all the quest packs and stuff. And that's right away an incentive to pay for VIP. And then two, you have to imagine it from like Standing Stone Games' perspective. Yeah, buying a pass is cool so you can like play on the server or something. That's nice. But subscribers, like that's likely how they sell themselves to like investors and stuff. Um, like I sort of like think sure. about it if I was to sell myself on my live stream to like a, 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 you know, a sponsor or something, I can be like, you know, how much money do you make? If I'm looking for an investor, it's like, well, you know, I have these many subscriptions, which is this much money that I just get every single time. This is a guarantee of money. And then there's also like donations and stuff. And that's completely random. And some months it's good and some months it's bad. And there's no way to tell in between. And that's kind of their system. You know, when people are subscribed to the game, people are getting the like they get a consistent amount of money. They can say, this is how much money we make, investor. You should invest in our product versus um, when people buy points. Buying points is great, but it's inconsistent. They never know when they're going to get people to buy points other than like point drives and stuff. Um, and so they need people to subscribe. So I, I know a lot of people want to play and they're not subscribed to the game, but I don't see Stanley Stone Games making an adjustment to that model as to how it works in the near future. I don't either, but I would, I would like them to put a pass in place. Or at least, right. so on the website, they have two months or they have a year pass for sale. Where if they're going to run an event for three months, it would have been nice if they would have sold a three-month thing. And I think the reason you do something like that is to give everybody a taste. Sure. Because you give them a taste of VIP. The difference for me between VIP and not VIP is so much night and day that you don't even realize that the value is there. The value for me is there so much more to be a VIP for $100 a year than, than not. It's, it's ridiculous. And if you give people enough of a taste, I think they'll you'll, keep you'll, they'll keep it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even like having it be, you know, play a little little extrapolation here. Even like a four month pass might, you know, like so you get the the length of the hardcore league plus an extra month, right? It makes it more effective to do it that way. And then you go back to your live server with it for an extra month. That that incentive there would probably be enough, probably help keep some more subscriptions, right? That's what I was gonna say. I think four month is probably like, yeah, they should do it. They were gonna do something like that. Assuming that they, if they did it again, it was three, three months long. But hey, let's let's kind of transition uh, transition a little bit. Um, you know, if we do this again, what what should it look like? What should be different 
uh, kind of thing. I think we kind of already talked about the VIP thing. Um, I agree. Uh, like I, I have no issues with it staying VIP only. Um, I mean, it's it's an obvious way for them to drive uh, money uh, out of the thing. And look, their business they need to they need to keep the lights on. Um, I know DDO is doing really well, uh, but I, I think that you know. But I I like Samus's idea, right, of having a, a maybe a a little better uh, pass kind of thing. There's also I think an opportunity here. You know, we've seen these bonus item bundles. You know, you could I think do kind of a a hardcore league bundle. Uh, little uh, starter like a starter kit kind of a thing um i think there's an opportunity there if they did this again you know whatever you know 1500 3000 points or whatever and give you some goodies uh to kind of start on the hardcore league server i think that's a a reasonable thing yeah i think that would be a fantastic idea i honestly thought they were going to do that to start just have like a couple potions or something and you know just different things that you might find handy out of the store I don't know. I think maybe the people who ha- had pre-purchased the the stuff in advance were they may have looked at that and thought there's the people who are going to do this are likely to have already had those things as well, and that that was already a big start. I mean, to a certain um, extent, but you could do things like um, you know, here's a a hardcore league uh, bundle that you can grab, and you know, maybe has some beholder crystals in it. Some um, I don't know what are some of the other some mummy cure elixir stuff like there's there's some kind of more esoteric things that people probably normally don't think of to buy right and you know it gives them that taste that you're talking about that maybe they, right and i'm not like saying it. it's not a good idea i'm just saying i think that's the reason why it didn't have one to start with is because they went okay well 70 percent of the people who are going to do the hardcore league probably already have x y and z things i think it's so if we just try to so. do something they'll think of it as a money thing I was thinking of this when you were talking about the uh, the leaderboard and how kind of it, it it doesn't look very polished. I think a lot of this actually, like some of the mechanics here, they, this was not something that they. Um, well, this is it was an kind of a side right? project. Yeah, I think it was a side yeah. project, so they they didn't do a whole lot of investment into it. Um, I I think the reason why they didn't is because they just didn't they didn't think of it. it. I think it came. I think this happened a little faster than maybe some of their other stuff does. It, it wasn't. And this is not to disparage them. I think they did a great job, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really glad they did it. But I think they were they didn't put as much forethought and and kind of flesh it out as much as as maybe some of their other stuff kind of happens, right? Well, the DDO community can be extremely hard to read sometimes. Just yeah, a cursory glance at the forums, you'll find it's a thousand voices, and they're all screaming different things. So it, I can imagine that it would be difficult for them to see ahead of time, like what is the actual interest? Like I don't know, spend a week throwing some server rules together and put it, see what happens. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't think that, I think they just didn't really come up with the idea. Right. Um, so well, this is where I get a little bit negative of SSG. <laughs> and I think they probably put about the usual amount of effort and forethought into something. Uh, I always, I've always said, I've always been hypercritical of SSG when it comes to where they don't think things through enough before they act. Sure. And I think this is a situation where that that was clearly the case. Um, and I, I I hope in the future, and I and I'm extremely confident in the future because they're very very good at learning from their mistakes and fixing it. Mm-hmm. That they will spend more time thinking through potential situations in the future before they start two, which I adamantly want them to do. I I bet they do it. I kind of hope they. And that, that leads to kind of an interesting question: of like, when should they do it again? Like, how long? How long should it run, and when should they do it again? I think. Yeah. Um, I almost wonder if what should they do different. I mean, yeah. I, I I really enjoyed the Hardcore League, but if somebody says to me, "Hey, we're gonna have Hardcore League two, and it's exactly the same as Hardcore League one with the same cosmetics, as if they're just different colors, or they have like a two instead of a one underneath that little skull, so you can see that you're part of Hardcore League two, and it's the same game," I will probably completely skip it because uh-huh. I I've already played it and I already got that new experience. Um. And I'm hoping that they'll do something, something just change the actual gameplay loop. Something very so, basic, not, you know, a huge thing, but just something minor to make it feel that it's different from playing regular DDO. So this is one of the things that we've actually brainstormed quite a bit on my stream. Um, and there's a lot of different things that I think would be interesting to do. For example, uh, instead of having a one life to live buff, you can die as many times as you want to like normal, do all the, all the normal tricks, but you have a countdown clock. 
and time only gets added to that countdown clock when you complete a quest. And depending on uh, the difficulty and the XP from that quest, you add time to your clock. So anytime that your character is active on the hardcore server, that time ticks down. When that time ticks zero, you go to the penalty. Interesting. Like, I feel like something like that is a different challenge. Right? I mean, um, I, 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 I can see a zillion problems with that one, though. Like, what do you that, do if, you know, your pregnant wife has to go to the hospital, and so you drop your game, and you go, and now your character dies? Well, you quit. Then your character dies. Apparently, other priorities took precedence over my pregnant wife. I mean, I you, you, you could quit the game and, and stop that, yeah. too. But... Yeah, or you had, like, a, a really mean burrito, and you're like, oh, man, I gotta, I gotta take care of this. You go to the bathroom. Alt F4. But you're, like, but the idea of, like, I have to get up for a minute and a half, so I should alt F4 my game every time would sure. be very tiring very fast. If you have to, again, I'm not saying that the timer is, like, five minutes, and you have to get XP every five minutes. Um, I'm saying maybe the timer is 30 minutes, and when you complete a quest for every 100 experience, it puts 30 seconds on the clock, or, again, the actual numbers have to be counted down, but I think... Like you said, you have to fundamentally change the how and the aspect of why you go to the penalty box. I think the we already did the one life to live sure. penalty. So you have to come up with a new penalty to fundamentally change how you do it. Uh, somebody else changed, like, melee weapons only. <laughs> I don't know if that's going get, to get you very far. Well, think about how much more different it would be compared to this experience through. Like, this experience through, the most success I had I was the only not artificer or the only not ranged person. Or sometimes I would be the second guy who wasn't like that. Um, it's just one of those situations where it was, it was weird. Or what if the only mode is Reaper mode? Like, so there's a the, bunch of different things they could do. It's just a matter of figuring out which one is the next fun twist. One of the, so I, we've talked about a lot on my stream as well similar but the kind of the, the problem i always run into is you want it's a new fun game mode you want it to be inclusive that people want to play it right so people feeling the stress that they can't like take a break from the game which is a very unhealthy thing and you know, even like nintendo games try to be like hey take a break every once in a while mm -hmm. uh, whereas the countdown timer ddo is like if you take a break like at any point you're you're your clock's ticking down feel the pressure um but even something like you can only play melee characters but DDO is the most expansive game as far as class design and, and character customization. Telling people that they can't play a whole bunch of characters is completely going against the exact principles of the whole game. And so I love that idea of being like, let's just get rid of Inquisitive for a little bit. But by doing so, it kind of fundamentally like goes against what DDO kind of really sure. is core. Um, so I was I was kind of like thinking if we were if they were to add something different. The basic idea is something that I don't know how hard this would be to program, but something simple like call it Haste League. All monsters and players are hasted all the time. So that's that matters because monsters never cast haste. So they don't have so now that everything's just moving slightly faster. People can still play on normal if they want, and they don't have to, you know, because a lot of people that leveled through normal to get to level 20 cloak, which should be a valid option if you play only Reaper mode. Like I would if you say only Reaper mode, I imagine 90% of the players wouldn't even play. Probably. Because there's a lot of people that didn't play Reaper. You know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it really changes up the gameplay because, you know, what do you do when that red name hobgoblin is hitting twice as fast? How do you handle that situation? I don't know. But you figure it out. But you also hit twice as fast. So, <laughs> no. Again, remember when I'm saying this, though, I'm also talking about removing the current debuff. Or buff, in this case. Of right. One life. The one life to live. So, right. so you're taking that away and you're adding a different challenge. That, that approaches everything. So I'm not saying put in Reaper mode only and one life to live. Like, that sounds terrible. But I think if you're, if you're fundamentally shifting the game because of this, again, quote-unquote buff or debuff, however you want to talk about it, you need to really throw a bunch of spaghetti at the wall and see what seems like the most fun. And this is going to be something that is probably going to be best done with uh, the crowd the crowd uh, thought process. And I'm certainly not saying that I have all the answers right now. I'm merely saying that you get enough people throwing spaghetti at the wall, <laughs> like five or five or six noodles are going to stick. And those are the five or six that you do. You pick, you pick those and you go with it. 
And I'm also not necessarily saying that you run a three month league. Maybe you run two months. Maybe you run two months, month. or maybe you even run a one month league, but you have one every quarter that runs one month. And then all of a sudden you have that ladder system that applies. And I also think that you could potentially do this on live and have an opt in situation on a character. Like I've opt into a particular program that uh, lets us play on the ladder on your live character, and then you can opt back out when you're done. And I feel like these are all things that, that they can look at and explore because I think the ladder idea is so important. And the rewards that you can get are so important. I also really I like the like... idea of taking doing one life to live, but doing a copy of one of your characters from live and putting it over <laughs> on the hardcore. That would make like it how much more of an experience would that have been? It's very imbalanced. You'd start very imbalanced, though. It'd be kind of the the drawback to that. Like I really liked how they they set it up, where like everyone's starting from the same ground zero, right? So no one has a a real leg up. Yeah, um, me too. Sure. That was uh, one of the things I loved about Hardcore League is that yeah. every group you get into, it's a ragtag group of people who are not ready to do Reaper mode going into it anyway. Yeah, I think that there's some good things they did there. I I kind of like the idea of like changing what the parameter is like the the overarching you know changing it from you can only die once to you have a certain amount of of time how far can you get in a certain amount of time like i like the i like the concept of changing what that that overarching parameter limiting factor is i'm not sure if time is the answer because i think that'll turn a lot of people off um because I think the the beauty of the one life to live, right, is this idea that you can play the game at your own pace or whatever that is, and not have to worry about it, and um, so you don't have to fundamentally. The only thing you're fundamentally changing is don't die, as opposed to play in a completely different manner of of speed. Um, but I think there are well, some you, options there that you could explore of of that. Well, that's just it. That's exactly what I'm saying. Is that if they open up to the idea of like, okay. Hardcore League was amazing success, but we don't want to do one life to live for the next Hardcore League. What are right. some of your thoughts on how to do it? And start getting that spaghetti getting thrown at the wall. And then take those ideas and be like, all right, this is the one we're going to take and tweak and refine. And then you, and then that is the tweak to the game. You know? I had actually I thought that... Um, sounds great. One of the things that I had kind and of thought of was like, how do you do more than one life? Um, and... Uh, you know, maybe you get you can have more than one life, but there's a cost to it, not a monetary cost, uh, but this idea that you know maybe if you die, if you spend twenty thousand Reaper XP, you come back to life, right? Like you lose some, you lose some of what you're going for. Um, well, like the idea of the old-fashioned permanent constitution damage, where some oh, sort of permanent counter against against your character in sure. some way, like. Minus two to all your stats. Like that's a Ooh. big cost for coming back to life. It's a big cost. But at at four thousand five hundred points of favor points, if we're continuing to do favor chase, like that's a price I'm pretty willing to spend. Yeah. Right. So, and I have to consider, I have to consider other things. Like, all right, well, now do I build for build for a death? Do I line my <laughs> stats up preemptively for a death? Yeah, How do I rebuild my character? Lot. Exactly. What do you guys think? So, about? Just spaghetti. Sure. Go ahead, Shrimp Pal. I was going to say, I would like to see maybe if there is not a clear idea of how exactly they would like to do it. Um, maybe doing something like every weekend in January, there's going to be a short server that comes up and it's very temporary. It's just a test to see what people like about different things where they just test out the ideas that they've come up with over the like several months. So like, right. you know, it's a, it's a weekend event. And it's the blind league. You have no, you're blind. Everyone's blind. No blindness immunity. You're blind. That's the whole league. And then you, and you people play around. So you see what they can do or something. Or they just test out different ideas. They do it like just for a weekend. They gather some data, ask people how they felt about it. Next, next Friday, bam, there's another thing that comes up. And then it just gives them feedback so that they can understand. I mean, I'm sure Stainstone Games has like a, a pretty concrete idea. They, it's, they definitely sound like a group of people that, you know, are very in tune with, um, you know, or like they've got they got like a, very, a big plan. Like I, I am certain that once once they felt saw that hardcore league was successful or not successful, or whatever by their own metrics, they probably were like, okay, cool. What are we gonna do for hardcore league two? What's the plan? <laughs> um, so I wouldn't be surprised if 
if they already have a lot of these ideas lined up, but it would be cool to see them kind of iterate quickly with the player base if that's at all possible. Jared? What did you guys feel about the the metrics that they use, the favor and reaper XP? Do you have ideas on other metrics that they should use? or? Yes. I have a couple different ideas. I think that they should, if possible, um, also... I think that there should be a separate thing that is like uh, on the leaderboard. Like the leaderboard should be like a couple pages. And so there should be like, you know, the, the main leaderboards. And then they should have like top player of each class as well. Mm. So that all the classes are represented. Because, you know, when you look at the leaderboard, it's a lot of favorite souls and rogues. And most of them are inquisitives. Um, but then you might be like, oh, but who was the person that was like top barbarian? Who was top fighter? Um, sure. and, and being able to let everybody who decided to take the plunge into something different, what, you know, where, where are they on the leaderboard? I think that would be cool as well. It's a little more class information. Yeah. That could be interesting. As yeah, far as, like, metrics, I mean, I think when the league is over, I'd love to see a page where they like, this is the most popular weapon. This, this is the quest that people die the most in. This is the monster that did the most things, and whatever. I think that would also be Personally, I feel like it comes down to completely, like, they did the favor one. Like, this was the favor one, and the experience points one. Now we need to have, for two, it needs to be a different thing. And for three, it needs to be another different thing. Sure. And sure. I do like the idea of being able to go and refine the refine the things and see things like what Shrim Tom just said about the classes in particular. I think it would be really interesting. Um. But I, I would like to, I want the metric to change every time, personally. I want a different experience. I don't want it to be a similar experience, but right. slightly tweaked. I want it to be, okay, now time is important. Or now amount of XP I cast is important. Or, or XP, the amount of spells I cast are different. You know what I mean? I want, to, I want the theme to be, I want it to be different. Sure. You know? And that's... Those are the kind of things that I personally would like to see that would make it a very do and, ex and different experience for me. Uh, I don't know if, it, if it's all likely or possible, but that's what I want. I also would like them to take the advantages and the knowledge that they've learned when it comes to the Hard Tour League and the latter and figure out how they could do some sort of... Maybe there's a quest that's like a challenge in DDO that they add that has a leaderboard. Mm that you can go into and you can see the leaderboard for a particular level. I want to see the ladder system, that level of competition added into the regular game. Sure. Well, and I feel like this is not unreasonable. One thing I hope they don't change though is uh the reason why I kind of kind of brought up the the metrics like the the favor and the reaper XP is kind of your your baseline metrics for different things. The reason why I like those a lot is it pushes, and they talked about this in the the interview we did. It pushes you outside your comfort zone, right? Like it, it forces you to to do quests that you don't normally do, um, and to to push the envelope of difficulty level, uh, which I know some people don't necessarily like. But uh, that was kind of some of the fun part for me, uh, was playing with other people and doing these quests that I normally wouldn't run. Oh, for sure. I think that like. Me and not enjoying getting five thousand favor because I didn't find it fun, but I still think it's a like it's a really really good way to have goals. Right. I kind of wish they had like more increments, I guess. <laughs> sure. So yeah. there was level twenty and level thirty. I and there was also like level or getting seventeen fifty favor, maybe like three thousand and five thousand, and then like for reaper points, there should be whatever. Um, and I also think that there potentially should be a, a like some type of cool prize or something for like top one. Like where sure. they can they they put your character like as one of the statues in the Hall of Heroes or something. They definitely like, need to. Uh, they definitely need to come up with something to push you into epics, though. I think. Like, yes. A lot of people just avoided epics. Um, well, and so. that's another thing that you could do. Everyone starts at level twenty. Sure. Like there's there's so many things that they could do depending on. On what what again what kind of like, things that kind of flush out for ideas. No, yeah. everybody starts at level fifteen and has everybody has some sort of kit of gear that they get, not unlike the the iconic. Yeah, there, there's there's a ton of things. Uh, all right. Uh, I think uh, anything else you guys want to say before we kind of wrap up the discussion here? 
just mm -hmm. just again uh ssg was super great i really appreciated it i think it generated a lot of really good views a lot of good content across everybody and pretty much every streamer slash youtuber that i watched they did like a most people have done some sort of review on it um and it feels like everybody had a different experience to me um and obviously everyone had different they met different goals or different tiers or whatever but i feel like the way they tackled those things were all different and unique and to me that is one of the more interesting parts of this experience yeah In a reflective I, mode. I i want i want to see a hardcore league too because i i started the full-time live streaming journey um about a month after the start of hardcore league so I didn't get to spend as much time doing as many things. I wanted to pretty much make a new character to 20 every week and give people builds that weren't inquisitive so that they could, they wanted to try different things, things that would be successful, um, which was the goal originally. And uh, I only got two, as opposed to the ones I wanted. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that it's, it was an amazing experience. I met a lot of new friends. I had an awesome time. And I'm hoping that they find a way to make Hardcore League 2, if it comes out, very, very interesting. Yeah. I think the, the the last thing I'll I'll say is uh I think it almost kind of underlines this idea that and we've kind of been talking about this uh in the player base for a while that server merges because um, it was fun to like get to play with a new population and and whatever and a larger population than I think that we're mostly used to which I think kind of underscored the underscored this idea of like man it'd be really nice if they could figure out how to merge servers a little cleaner um. I think that I think a lot of people would really enjoy that experience of consolidating the player base a little bit more, which also Absolutely. would insulate from having a, another hardcore league two and, and pulling people out to a special server. But, um, uh, alrighty then. Uh, so we'll close out the the show here. Uh, so thanks, uh, guys, for joining me. Um, Samus, why don't you tell people where they can find you and what you're doing? So I stream Dungeons Dragons Online every evening and most of the daytime streams, uh, but I cover the lunchtime window and the post-dinner windows primarily over on my Twitch channel and my YouTube channel uh, at Samus Garobo. Of course, you can also find me on Twitter at the same URL. And uh, yeah, that's a Monday through Friday primarily thing because I work on the weekends. So uh, hopefully... We will see you guys there. Please like, subscribe, and follow all those cheesy things that you have to say to get people to go over to your YouTube channel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do that stuff. And uh, I thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah. Stream time? Yeah. Um, if you're looking to find me, you can find me streaming every day, uh, Dungeons Dragons Online, and also a lot of Lord of the Rings Online because I'm playing that new expansion that is like super duper good. Um, so if you want to check that out, I'm at Stream Tom on everywhere. If you just Google Stream Tom, you'll find me. Um, and uh, if you really like the content that I produce, um, you know, follow, join, join, leave comments. I get, I get a lot of comments and people asking questions, especially on all the YouTube videos and how to do builds and stuff. And I try to be as attentive as possible. So, you know, if you is everything, anything you're missing about something I say, um, or if I'm wrong, it's very helpful. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I do make mistakes, and I really appreciate that there are people that call me out on it. I definitely said last week that you could go to either our streams and ask a question and get two very different correct answers. That's the exact same kind of thing where you can tell him he's wrong at. Samus says. Yeah, that. <laughs> I would also say, too, like, I don't stream anywhere near as much as you guys do, but it's a lot more fun when you're streaming and someone and people are chiming in, right? It makes that ex that experience and process more enjoyable, too. So uh, keep uh, keep commenting and stuff. Even for the podcast, right? Like, it's always fun to get comments and, and stuff, too. So um, on that note, hey, if you'd like to be part of the show, you know, leave some comments. Uh, if you want to add your own thoughts to uh, what Hardcore League 2 should look like, uh, you know, leave a comment, send me an email, dealercast at gmail.com. It really does add to that, not just the experience for the listeners, but to me as well, um, to kind of see what other people are thinking um, so we're not just talking into the void and, and stuff like that. But uh, So thanks for listening. Uh, thanks again to Samus and to Strim Tom for joining me today. Uh, we'll have a new topic next week. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can visit our website, dotocast.com, or you can support us on Patreon. You can also find show notes, patch shows, and more there as well, dotocast.com. You can find us on social media and follow us for the latest cast updates. I'm at dotocast at Twitter, uh, at StrimTom, uh, and at Samus Grobo if you want to follow these guys on Twitter as well to find out uh, when they are running stuff. 
uh, or you know, ask some questions there too. As far as like, uh, point commenting and talking with our fans. So until next time, may all your attack rolls be crits, all your chest level appropriate. Have fun and don't forget to gather for bus.